everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to do some low immersion speckling. I have, I forget, five or six colors mixed with citric acid powder ready to go, and we're going to layer all of these colors onto 400 grams of Muse yarn. This is a bouncy, single ply Aran weight yarn from Nitpix. It is 100% superwash merino and is such a fun yarn. It shows off speckles so, so good. And I'm really, really excited. Yesterday, while wearing my P100 respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, I measured out one teaspoon of citric acid powder and then added little bits of some Derma acid dyes in sea spray, peacock blue, Plum Dandy, Deep Purple, and Intense Iris. And I used this dye for another project. So technically, I suppose it's leftover dye, but the ratio of dye powder to dye still stands. And I am really excited to just go for these colors and layer them all over this yarn, low immersion on the stovetop. Before we get started, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Don. Don, thank you so much for being my lab partner today, and I really hope you're going to love this video. If you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner and get shout outs in a Dye Pot Weekly video, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. But now, let's go speckle. However, before we get started, I do need to pre-soak all of this yarn. So I'm going to add some removable nylon zip ties onto the yarn and then we are going to pre-soak this in plain tap water for an hour or so. Typically I would do at least 20 to 30 minutes uh, but sometimes just based on scheduling I end up doing a little more and since we're speckling having the yarn completely saturated isn't as important because we're not aiming to get the dye to penetrate all the way through the yarn so depending on the technique you're doing having the yarn be more or less wet can make a difference but if you'd like to learn more about any of the yarn tools and equipment that i use for my videos i do have links down in the video description to this knit picks yarn base uh, my pots and pans and other safety equipment that i use so it's always worth checking out the video description for useful, helpful information if you're interested in getting started on your own yarn dyeing journey. In my pan here, which is a four inch deep catering steam pan, I've started with four cups of water and I'm gonna add three tablespoons of white vinegar. This acid isn't that necessary just because we're gonna be adding the dyes with citric acid powder anyway, but this will help things strike quickly. And we might add more water if needed uh, once we start adding our yarn. There's still a little bit of liquid left in the yarn as I am bringing it to the pan. Oh, funny, I saw those colors and I freaked out for a second, thinking that like somehow I had gotten some dye. I forgot that the ties have color on it, which is odd to me, I'll be honest, just because like when, when you're dyeing bare yarn, you don't want to have color on your ties. So I'm not sure what it is about this one. It, the color is definitely on the tie, um, not on the bare yarn. So there is that. But this is allowing me to bring the acid in. And I definitely do want to increase the water level. I'm not going to measure it. I am going to add some of the pre-soak until we get to, I think, this state right here um, where there is lots, uh, maybe I want a little more. <laughs> I can always try to remove some water. I want there to be enough liquid so that most of the yarn is at the surface, 
but if I move the yarn I want there to still be some liquid on the side because we don't want anything to burn. Now frequently I only dye 300 grams of yarn at a time. The reason why I'm comfortable doing 400 grams in here is that this yarn is fairly low yardage. There are only 114 yards per 100 grams and so that means that as I'm dyeing and moving this it's a little easier to get good coverage than uh, something with maybe 400 yards where there might be yarn more underneath and things like that. But uh, let's start heating this up so we can speckle. All right, let's start with some what I think is our plum dandy. But it's hard to know sometimes since I did mix these yesterday. And this is not, well it could be. Whatever this is, it's definitely breaking into a combination of blue and red. And I think that that is beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I just wish I could remember exactly which color it was. Yeah, that's probably the deep purple. And so then that might make this our plum dandy. Yep. Uh, the deep purple powder looks more pink than our plum dandy powder. And I'm just speckling pretty heavily. Um, there's going to be some areas where the colors spread a bit, and I'm not really wiping off my gloves in between. Um, just a tiny bit to help me figure out which color is which. I believe that this is going to be some intense iris. Now, one way that I could test this before going onto the yarn is by um, touching it and going on a paper towel. But yes, this is Intense Iris. We're going for heavy, layered, all over speckles today. Uh, it's not Intense Iris. And then I have less of these last two colors. Okay, this is our Peacock Blue. And making sure to add some color down by the ties. Oh, I want to reduce the heat to low. I am wearing my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, like I mentioned earlier. But this is fun. The plum dandy is streaking a bit. I have a little bit of some sea spray. And my goal right now is not to make sure that I get coverage of all colors evenly all across the board. But I do want to get some of each color on every single skein. So that is the goal. There will absolutely be differences between all of these skeins. Um, there's sort of no way around that. But we've got the makings of a really fun colorway. And I will need to let the yarn sit and we'll move the yarn and add more dye. And it's just gonna be uh, fun. I'm curious like what would happen if I was doing this heavy with rainbow. I've definitely done heavy speckles in the past, but not usually. Usually I'll do it with like one or two colors versus so many, but I am enjoying this a lot. Uh, and especially how the deep purple is breaking. So I don't mind if we end up with like a pastel or if we end up with white behind. Both of those are perfectly acceptable to me. So now I am going to go uh, wipe off my gloves and then I'm going to zoom in so we can take a closer look at these specks. So we've got some sharp speckles in here. You can also see some really cool streaks that sort of go with the ply as the tie strikes and then sort of spreads a little bit, which is really, really fun. I have been doing some comparisons of doing low immersion speckles like this and then doing some speckling on the countertop followed by steaming. And there's definitely perks to both. I expect we're gonna see some color spread when we flip this over. I think that uh, doing speckles on the countertop followed by steaming definitely can give smaller, sharp speckles. But if you want 
slightly bigger speckles. I like this type of technique. I am going to keep, I'll zoom back out. I am going to keep a close eye on the water level as we go about this, but let's go ahead and wait for five minutes and then we'll flip the yarn. Okay, let's check. All right, it looks like all of the dye has absorbed, which is great. A lot of times I think that uh, when you're dyeing yarn and it's hot, the dyes will just strike that much faster. Uh-oh. Okay, so the goal is to expose as much bare yarn as possible. And we will be doing multiple flips. You can see when I move this that we've got heavy speckles, but because from the way that the yarn is scrunched up, uh, that depends on what we see. But this is, a, we're going for random and all over. This one didn't have as much coverage as its friends. And so I imagine that I will be flipping this many, many times. But what we're seeing, there's some areas where we see a little bit of some pastel color spread, but mostly what we're seeing is these colors strike right where we put them, which is exactly what we want. So now I am going to speed things up and dye the rest of the yarn. I applied the colors all over the yarn, waiting three to five minutes in between each flip, looking for large stretches of white before moving on. And I really did think that because of the yardage and this yarn is really thick, that I wasn't gonna need to flip the yarn as much to get good coverage. But I guess bringing 400, 400 grams of yarn into the pan, it still needed lots of flips. And I focused on adding colors in areas where there wasn't as much dye. And my goal was to try to get a little bit of each color on every skein as much as I possibly could. Um, but then uh, once all the colors were added, Wow, I love the way that this is coming together and these speckles and this yarn base. It's all just so beautiful. I think I am finally satisfied. I'm still wearing the mask because I have a little bit of dye left. Don't worry, I won't leave it behind. But now I want to add a lot more water to our pan. And let's add another three tablespoons of white vinegar. Part of the goal right now in doing this is to uh, just, if there's dye powder that hasn't had a chance to strike, we're gonna let it strike. This colorway is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I'm gonna turn up the heat. We're gonna bring it so we get just about to a simmer. Then we're gonna bring the heat back to low and let it heat for 20 minutes and then I'll come back. All right, and the 20 minutes are up and I turned off the heat and I am going to remove the yarn. I would say that we do have, like, the background doesn't feel super white anymore. It does feel like we have some spread and a soft purple, but we definitely have these heavy, multicolored specks. I'm sure we'll find that there are some patches that maybe after the fact I'm gonna be like, oh, I wish I had more dye. But I, at some point, like, I, I just overthink things, right? Um, so this is beautiful, and I mean, I could have gone even heavier, I think. But anyway, I'm gonna reuse this dye bath for another project. But in the meantime, I'm gonna set this aside to cool so we can wash it. But if you want to see more of my journeys and how I use leftovers, <laughs> make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I always post videos at least twice a week and you don't want to miss any of the fun. It's now time to wash our, it's funny, it is heavy speckled yarn, but the speckles could still be even heavier. Um, I could have lost, I, I could have gone more. 
and maybe some time I think that's exactly what I want to do I want to go even heavier but maybe I'll pick colors slightly differently like I want some colors that have a little bit more variety I think that the deep purple intense iris and sapphire blue well at least deep purple and intense iris they're they're pretty close to one another so more of that like sea spray and bring in some other elements this will happen again before well before the end of 2021 maybe but anyway i'm not seeing any bleeding let's add a little bit of some clear dish soap uh i'm not anticipating any bleeding the dye bath was completely clear um and i just love how this looks on this yarn base yep no bleeding at all so i'm gonna rinse this a few more times to finish rinsing out the soap then i will put the yarn through my spin dryer hang out to dry and we'll come back and take a closer look this yarn turned out amazing one thing that's funny though is at the time i was like oh this is such heavy speckles and looking at it i mean it's not light speckles but i could have gone heavier like there's areas in here where i could have added more and done more and gone further which isn't to say i don't love this yarn i do i absolutely love it but I do wonder what it would take for me to get like a heavy layer of density of multicolored speckles. Hmm. This is something that I've absolutely done with uh, one color. I think there was a navy where I almost got something solid by layering on navy dye mixed with citric acid over and over and over on top of itself. And so Maybe that's what I'd need to do. I was sort of adding color to places where there was less, but maybe the way to do it super heavy would be to have less yarn in the pan, that's one thing, but to really put everything on top of one another. And maybe instead of five colors, stick with say two or three uh, as I try this. So I'm, I want to go, I want to turn up the volume and try to go even heavier at some point. Which isn't to say I don't love this yarn, because I do. I absolutely love it. I love the way that there is this wash of color. And looking at it, you can see it like a pastel background, especially when you're squinting your eyes of purple and blue and pink. I don't feel a lot of the sea spray coming through, but we had a lot less of that. I think that even with the differences in the skeins, it still works so beautifully together. Man, what other color combinations should I try? I know a lot of times I lean in this purple type family. I mean, just look at my logo. It's a color combination that I really, really love. Uh, but I like, I always write down all of your color suggestions. And so I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Don, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. I really hope that you love how this yarn turned out. And I know that I need to do more speckles. I need to do more heavy layers of speckles and with different colors and really dive into this more because I absolutely love how this yarn turned out. And again, if you would like to learn how you could become a lab partner or last minute lab partner on a Dye Putt Weekly video, the listings, the links to the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop are down in the video description. Last Minute Lab Partners can pick from a video I've already started filming. And so you get some information about the yarn base and the techniques and the colors that I'm using. And then I will film some last minute shout outs to insert into the video for you. And so it's a really great way uh, to help support the content here on the channel. So Don, thank you again for being my lab partner. I really, really appreciate the support. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you love the yarn that I dye and want to bring some home, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. The shop is filled with hundreds of skeins of yarn that are featured in my videos, and sometimes if you go and you're looking through, you can get some sneak peeks of what's coming up on the channel, because I always include the video titles of the dates that I'm releasing the videos in the item descriptions. And so sometimes yarn gets into the shop before I've actually released the video. So you can get some little sneak peeks there. 
I dye most of my colorways in fairly small batches and I do sometimes repeat colorways but usually I'm playing with different techniques and combinations so I'm creating new colorways. So if there's something that you really love you should snag it because it might not come back. <laughs> you can find a link to the shop down in the video description. Thank you so much for supporting my journey in color and yarn. I have so much fun playing with different yarn bases and techniques on these bases and there's I have so much more that I want to explore and I'm so excited to share this journey with all of you through these videos. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Uh, give a thumbs up, leave comments, all that jazz. When I go back and look at the beginning of the Dye Pot Weekly series and see the speckles I was trying there and compare that to the speckles that I can achieve now, whew, it's pretty amazing. I really feel like I've grown so much by trying to share this journey and it really is the best challenge for me to keep trying new things. Thank you so much for supporting this journey and thank you so much for watching.